So let's uh, welcome God's light, the light of being. the wonder of being, of presence. We are the, the peace, the love, the beauty. We don't need to earn it. We don't need to achieve that which we are. So I welcome myself as yourself as God's self, as the only self, the only reality. The love, the beauty, the peace. the wholeness of being. Indivisible reality. The sun, the light which shines onto everything. I is this light. And without the light, there is darkness. In recognizing myself, I shine knowingly. As God's light. I recognize myself not for my personal satisfaction the recognition of my true nature. Allows the veils to dissipate, to lift. You are the self, you are the presence, the transparency of being.
that never leaves itself in truth, that never becomes uh, a personal consciousness living in space and time. So over and over, we return to this recognition and rather than pursuing experiences and engaging in improvement of feelings, improvement of images, We turn our attention to the source, the I am. Not just during our meditations and contemplations, but irrespective of time and space. So in these meditations, we soak in and as the peace of being. as if to recharge our batteries. So that throughout the day, irrespective of what is unfolding, God's presence is with you, as you. The best company So you are watchful of the tendency to argue, to resist, to wish for some personal gain, for the imaginary person you imagine yourself to be. You are watchful of the argumentative mind, the desirous thoughts and feelings of lack and need. So 
so you don't erroneously serve the wrong master. So you don't erroneously return to the protection of your personhood, which is separate from God's reality. So you recognize within every thought and action God's touch and in this recognition you recognize your true self and the righteous past the path of uh, thy will be done I am thy love expressing itself through you by you you are expressing yourself as myself as everything and everyone so you can see and feel the true sisterhood and brotherhood So you can live as this one totality that is not lacking or seeking or envying, or regretting. So your life is your garden and your uh, realm, your laboratory, your field of experimentation. Every moment, every instant. You provided this opportunity of recognizing uh, your true self, recognizing God's face. Everything you perceive and you conceive is a reflection of God's being. The being that you are and that you know yourself to be. One being. One reality, one truth, one love, one ocean, one understanding. You never 
leave yourself. That which you are does not unfold in time, does not grow or age. To live from this understanding so that in every thought, every action, every perception, you are confirming this understanding. That I am the universal self, one reality. With every step you take, every sensation, every feeling, every thought, you deepen this understanding. So that your existence is the existence of eternity, the eternity of being. When a, a rose blooms in the garden, the perfume of the rose fills the entire garden. It's a beauty, it's sweetness. But then, when you turn your attention in the direction of the thought of me, my past and my future, You turn your face away from truth. You live the falsehood. You get entangled. within your own mind.
Every moment is equal in God's view. Everything and everyone is equal in God's view. Your life, your life is not your personal life. It is God's life living itself through you. not you as a separate reality. But you as God's reality. Okay, well, if you have any questions, make sure you unmute your mic. And if you turn on your video, we can see each other. So any, any questions? Hi, Magdi. Holly. Hello, Holly. Hi. There, hey. okay, there I am. Hello. Um, so with a, with a group of friends this week, I've been given this um, playful but sort of serious assignment of 
forgiving someone. And I have been um, reflecting on that uh, over the week. And I was wondering if you can talk at all about forgiveness. Um, because I know also that um, the direct path isn't look isn't all about like evaluating your life and looking back and making amends and, and this sort of thing. So um, mm -hmm. I wonder if you can talk yes. about it from the yes. non-dual perspective. Yes. Well, from the non-dual perspective, which is the perspective of the one reality, one truth, one consciousness, one God, one Brahman, oneself there is no other so that's going to the heart of forgiveness whenever you're forgiving somebody else you're forgiving yourself there is no other self but thyself. And thyself is this one self, is God's self. And God is not in the forgiving business. Just because God is not in the blaming business, is not in the sin, the sinner, and the salvation. That is a a completely different paradigm from the paradigm of the non-dual reality. You see, you imagine somebody, you imagine good and bad, you imagine events which are all within your own self and you're forgiving the other but in forgiving the other, it's not true forgiveness because the other is still there. And so the guilt is maintained, but via your dualistic ben benevolence, you forgive the sinner from his sin you take on this imaginary position of the forgiver, of the God that sees right and wrong and restores justice, restores goodness. Well, God is not in the business of restoring goodness and justice because God's mind and in God's reality, there is no good and bad, there is no sinner and the forgiver. Whenever we step away from the understanding of self, of truth, of the one reality, of Christ's mind, God's mind, we are stepping into ignorance. We are entering the realm of fiction and imagination and solitude and loneliness and despair. And problems to solve and issues to settle. That entire realm is a false realm, is a the realm of fiction. It is not the realm of reality, of truth. It is one's guilty mind that perceives guilt and forgiveness. And the guilt arises from separating yourself from God, separating yourself from truth. And in separating yourself, you so-called separate the other, or you create the other that you separate from yourself. And of course, separate from, from, from consciousness, from the universal self. There is no true forgiveness because there is no true sin. There is no fictitious 
forgiveness because there is no fictitious sin. There is no sinner and no forgiver. So you don't leave God's castle. As soon as you leave God's castle, you're in the marketplace. Perceive multiple distinctions and you're in the realm of perceptions, sensations, mentations. You're in the mind, the illusion of the separate me and separate others. What if you don't leave God's castle? Who are you to forgive? Who is there to forgive? In God's castle, only God is. So the living Christ's mind is living as this one reality, recognizing the one reality, which is a eternity and infinity of being, of consciousness, of awareness. There's no need to separate yourself and separate the other, another, any other. Why you go and unbury the dead? Why do you dig deep pit? To find something. to forgive or something to forget. <laughs> God's completeness and totality and wholeness is shining as your own mind. Shining as everything and everyone. Sunlight, one sun, shining as infinite reflections on the surface of the of the lake. Why trouble yourself with this reflection versus that reflection, this wave versus that wave? Are you not the shining, the shining sun, the light of being? It's your reality. What is your reality? Is it not that? The formless presence. That is not defined by any thought or sensation or perception or memory or image or event. Forgiveness is completed in one blink upon your recognition that there is nothing and no one to forgive. There is no sin and no sinner. In God's kingdom, which is the only kingdom. Man's world, the human world, 
starts with separation. It originates in separation from the totality. This is illusory because there is no separation in God's, king, God's kingdom. But in men's, men's the human so-called world, there's a world of separation, imagination and fiction. And in that deep realm of ignorance, we search for God in our world. We create God and gods in our world, imagining that our world is real and the reality of God must be found somewhere in our world. To no avail, the source that's bound to fail. It's a fictitious search. Thank you. Okay, Holly. Nice to see you, Holly. Nice to see you. Hello to Emma. I'll tell her. Okay. Hi, Magdi. Hello, Anna. Could you talk about attachment to um, the physical body? Like looking a certain way and being able to do certain things. So the physical body is it's a su super imposition. What does that mean? over an overlay. It's a cost costume. Mm -hmm. mm. That superimposition upon the realm of sensations. We superimpose certain perceptions, certain images, which are 
fleeting blips blips blip blip a fleeting <laughs> spark a fleeting an image which is a like the the firefly to superimpose certain images onto the sensory realm. The sensory realm is an open field. And within this open field, there, there are certain virtual shapes and shades and colorings. Which are sensations. So sensations are some sort of ripples within the open field of awareness. So this the sensory body is the, the body of the virtual body, the body of one could say the sensory body or the mental body. Although the mental body is, is more of a, more a, a body of images and which when you superimpose the, the body of images onto the subtle body of sensation, you have a, an impression of a, a physical body So the, so the physical body is a, a superimposition of perceptions and images onto the, the realm of sensation. And overlooking Overlooking this misunderstanding, let's say. We imagine a body that has its own reality, that has its own existence. And we imagine that it is this, that this, this body that has its own existence is the is the realm, the, the, the field within which sensations arise. And we imagine a, a, a certain shape and form which
becomes an object of our interest. In particular, when we identify ourselves with this image of a body, with this particular seemingly objectified form. And so it, it becomes a, an object of concern. So we become concerned about image of our body, the, how our body is appreciated and how is it doing, how is it looking, how is it appearing. And we, we overlook that uh, that this body that we are concerned about is a, sort of created by our or misunderstanding that the body is an open field of sensation. And uh, that this field of sensation, it's also can refer to it as a, an aspect of mind, that this aspect of mind or this field of sensation, its reality is not independent, doesn't have a reality independent of the reality of consciousness. And also, if you go along the model of the ob objective matter, matter like body, a body that has a very particular shape and form that is changing very, very, very slowly over time. Even if you go to that model, uh, you will find that that physical body which you experience and you perceive and you, you care to does not have an independent reality from the reality of consciousness. So whether you are considering the subtle body of sensation or the physical body, which is the superimposition of images onto sensations to create a an image-like body, whether you're contemplating the body of mind or the body of matter, 
you can come to the comprehension that the reality of both the body of mind and the body of matter is consciousness. So as a way of speaking, this really just a way of speaking, the true body is consciousness. So when you come to the comprehension that your true body is consciousness, that your true being is consciousness, that your true self is consciousness, that you are consciousness, that I is consciousness, and that consciousness is God's consciousness, not your personal consciousness. And whatever seems to be to personal consciousness to you is God's consciousness shining through you. Meaning it is God who is conscious. You may wonder whether God would be so concerned about its image. About how it appears. Would God be attached to its image? How it appears, how it, how it's, whether it's loved or liked or appreciated. But as long as you perceive yourself to be a particular set of image, a particular form, and that's what you experience yourself to be, A to Z, then you, you, know, you know, I mean, look at the cosmetic industry. <laughs> What a disaster. <laughs> you know, it's depression about our image, what we look like, what we are we liked. So you have to restore the correct understanding within yourself. Your, 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 your true image is, is no image to your true image, to your true, to your true being. There's no image. It's like in the ocean. Imagine a drop of, a particular <laughs> drop of water feeling that it, it, it's not pretty enough or how it's not, it's attached to its image. The ocean, imagine the ocean being attached to its image. For whom, for what? It, it's not a happy, it's not happy to be concerned about your image or about any image, to judge the other for the images and love has no images or it, it takes on the form of all images. Love is, it's, it, it goes right past through images. It, 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 it pervades all images. It's, it's not separated by images. You cannot isolate, isolate love via images. What's it that perceives an image? What's it that feels I am an image? Or, or there, I'm a body, there, there is an image of a body. 
What is it that perceives the image of a body? It's I, I perceive. The I that perceives is God's I. There is no, it's not an image that perceives. A body image does not perceive a, a body image. An image is, is a, a stubborn thought, a, a thought that's spinning. It's just refusing to, to return to its formless, to its formless nature. It's something that wants to assert a falsehood. Isaac, you ask, Hi, Mehdi, where is God in a community of people? When this community of people loves God, God is there. When the community of people loves their image, loves their money, loves their power, loves their party, loves their club, loves their uh, hetero heterosexuality or loves their, their religious ar arrogance. There is no God there among such people. In a community of people, which is always a community of one, God is there when I invite God and I recognize God and I love God, and I honor God. And God is not there when I am in my personhood, my personal bubble, my life, my misery, my good feelings, my bad feelings, my future, my past. When I mistake myself to be separate from God, God is not there. Only upon the contemplation and the recognition, because when you contemplate God, God is there, immediately is there. Doesn't, give, doesn't tell you, sorry, I'll be right back. When you contemplate God, is, God is right there. And, there, and that's, where the that's where God is in the community of God, in our recollection, in our love, not just of the senses and the, and the downloads of conditioning about me and her and past, my father, my mother, my tribe, my money, my future. That's, God is not there when you are considering yourself to be separate from God. That is never separate from you. It's only you separate yourself from God. So we can say that in this society, um, God is not present. <laughs> we could say that now. Yes. When we are, well, let's say, you know. we separate ourselves from God and we are concerned about our family, our tribe, our religious group, or we don't recognize God. Mm -hmm. And the, the, our entire society on this planet uh, has one God, which is the me. Me, me. And so we, we, congre we, con we make a congregations of the, the the blue me, the blue team, the red me, the red the red team, the the yellow me, the yellow teams. And this is how we experience so-called God. We experience community, which mm -hmm. is a community of separate selves. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a falsehood. It's it's, it's a make-believe community that we looking for wholeness and for you totality or and for 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 unicity by getting together with separate selves yeah we maintain our separation because we have not contemplated our true nature of being one the wholeness of consciousness the oneness of reality 
Mm-hmm. And so then we have combat, combat between the various teams. Yeah. We make alliances when it suits us and we declare war when it does not suit us. And all of that is in the realm of illusion, the, the mm. realm of darkness, of unhappiness. Like the uh, needing other people, for instance. Yeah, I'm sorry, what did you say? Needing, needing other people. You know. Especially in these times, you know. We, we are, uh, in a way, uh, and there is a realm of uh, we are we are we are also uh, social animals. We are social animals. We we like to be with people, interact with people, share. Here we are together, sharing. This is there is an enjoyment in in that. But that does not mean separation. To feel uh, drawn towards being with people and and uh, having company and enjoying people's company is not is not a, a denial of truth. It's not ignorance. It's not, uh, uh, it's not the, the wrong path, the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, the human organism needs to sleep and eat and rest and go for walks and exercise and, uh, and exercise their their understanding and also their social social interactions. The ignorance. It's almost like a excuse me, like a survival mechanism. No? It's in a way, yeah. It's you, in could a way, say, yeah. you could say it's at the at the survival level of being being together and conversing together and doing things together. I mean we do a lot of things. I mean the whole yeah. this whole society, we do a lot of things together. We plant in the old days, at least, we used to come together and plant together and harvest together, and mm-hmm. and we could we used to share the harvest. You know, your family you have four children, you take more. This family has only one child, takes a little less, etc. That's yes, so you could say. Yeah. And even if you go even further back in the tribal, in the in the uh, yeah tribal days, uh, the the tribe used to go out uh, harvesting together and hunting together and farming together for the for the survival of the tribe and uh, mm-hmm. that's that's part of uh, that's that's part of you know our experience yeah but uh, when I say oh no this is mine not yours you mm-hmm. know then it's a different thing you see I am right you are wrong you know when I'm judging you, when I'm judging you, I'm judging God in you, I'm judging myself in, in you. I am not recognizing yourself as myself. Yeah. When I feel that somebody is doing wrong to me, I am not recognizing you as myself. I'm recognizing you as the bad guy who's doing something wrong. Or, or, to me. Yeah. And you are the victim. <laughs> that I am the victim and, and you are, you know, the, the buho, I don't know how to say in English, you know, the mm-hmm. victimizer. The delinquent, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the community starts in our interest in truth mm-hmm. if when our interest in truth is not there we are living in isolation in the isolation of the bubble of me in the middle of the crowd in the middle of the crowd you are all alone you know you're all alone as a as a personal self you don't experience the the love you're experiencing, oh, I hope they love me, or I hope they accept me, or it's a different, yeah. you're experiencing your own bubble. Mm-hmm. And as long as you are, your life is 
is about your your own story and your own bubble and your own thoughts. You you remain separate from you, you're remaining separate and isolated and unhappy. Yeah. And you are judging yourself and judging others. All of that is in your in your bubble, in your iso- in your sense of isolation. Mm. The path to peace, to, to, to God, to truth, is the path of inner inquiry and, and understanding. To understand. It's a fresh understanding. It's not understanding from comes from the past. The fresh understanding that I is not my personal I, that I refers, refers to God's mind, God's reality, to the reality of consciousness, not my personal I, that there is one I, one reality, one, one truth, one reality, one happiness, one love, one and that, and that I is that, I is this one reality. And that this one reality is not made out of, made out of my thoughts or my feelings or my, my house or my experiences or that this reality is not made out of what I think it is. It is, it is not made out of anything, it is infinite and, and absolute and and it's always there. I is always there as this one transparent formless presence. You see? It's for an I that I is never lonely or alone or or depressed or it's winning or losing. Mm. That's that's just images on the screen, but I is, doesn't engage into, oh, wow, yeah, I am, I won, I am, I'm happy. No, I is happiness mm-hmm. already, it's happiness mm-hmm. already, irrespective of the weather, irrespective of whether they like me, they, irrespective of my personal image, I is peace and happiness, irrespective of anything. And why compromise I? Why compromise peace and happiness for uh, what people think of me, or what? Uh, how does the community accept me, or uh, 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 how much money I have in my bank account, or uh, why compromise peace and happiness? The belief that happiness depends on the bank account is a false belief. It's not true. Is you can have the biggest bank account. The belief that happiness depends on a good relationship. Mm-hmm. You could have a very good relationship. The happiness doesn't depend on that. You think happiness depends on on uh, you know me being. Uh, I don't know, having a healthy body. You could have a very healthy body. I mean, perfect health, never, you, ne- you never cough, you never sneeze, you, 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 everything is so perfect. You will find it's not, no, it, happiness doesn't depend on that. Mm. So, but yet there is happiness, we know happiness. But we do not know happiness when we, a belief that happiness depends on a um, beautiful image or depends on, on my family loving me or depends on my community mm. uh, being kind to me. Because then, then the conditions, you know, the conditions, they st- strangle happiness. You know, they, 
like a vine, you know, it goes around the tree, it, it kills the tree, mm. the conditions. Yeah. And the conditions that we, we are the, we are the one that can see, see that and say, no, no, happiness with conditions is not true happiness. We, we, we cannot, somebody else cannot see it for us. We, we have to see it ourselves and say, yes, yes, I, 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 I agree. I agree the happiness that depends on my partner, that depends on, on my employer, that depends on me getting good contract, that depends on what's gonna to happen to me tomorrow. This, ha this happiness is not, that's not the happiness. Mm. So I have to see that. So when, when I see that, I say, okay, when this happiness arises again, oh, wow, you'll be happy when you will get uh, mm -hmm. a beautiful uh, race. I have to see, oh, no, 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 no. That's just, mm -hmm. it's nice to have the race. I'm not, yeah. it's very yeah. beautiful. I love it. But it's not about my happiness. Mm -hmm. it's, about, it's not about happiness. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So, so. Otherwise, we always uh, dangling by a string, you know, like the, yeah. we are, uh, you know, dangling by the string. Oh my God, I hope, th I hope they don't let go of the string, you know, <laughs> or I hope the string doesn't break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sooner or later, that string is going to break, you know. <laughs> no more. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Nice to see you, Isaac. Yeah. Hi, Magdi. Yes, I'm not. So earlier when you were talking, I I got some of the things that you said, but um, I don't feel like I got it completely. And like one thing, uh, one thing that I wasn't aware of is how, so I was talking specifically about uh, like the the physical body and like what the physical body can do and how the physical body looks and one thing that I um, wasn't aware of that I noticed as you were talking was how like I I don't really remember how I look like like there's a constant like I have as many selfies as I take and as much as I look in the mirror I don't like, I don't, it's like something that I have to constantly remind myself, yes. which was like, oh my God. Um, you know, the, the way we look, you know, what we see when you're looking in some, somebody, you perceive through, through their body, through their form, their inner radiance or not, or the degree of the degree of radiance. You could have a very perfect lines of body and the right shape eyes and the right shape uh, eyebrows and the lips and the nose and everything. You know, you could take a picture and say, wow, you know, this is, but that's just you know, in the magazine, in the magazine, you know, in the, on the television. But when you see somebody, irrespective of their face, you perceive their inner light. You perceive. So the way you can perceive the inner light is by being transparent yourself. When you are not transparent and you're, you are loaded with images and ideas about the world, about beauty, about things, you are perceiving via the condition, via the judgments, via the 
via all your past ideas and notions about how things are and who I am and who she is and who he is, etc. So the, the way you can get this sensation, ex especially, except, except when you are with somebody who is radiant, there is a radiance, well, let me not go there. Let's, let's, let's stay with me. So, so the, there is like a, a, let's say a false perception and a, a true perception. It's a spectrum, it's not like black and white, there's a spectrum of perception that is completely judgmental of oneself because you're always judging yourself and the other, you're judging yourself. When you judge the other, you're judging yourself. So there is that's the spectrum of perception that is very judgmental, very confused, that is experiencing separation. And therefore it is in the judgment, it's in the comparison, it's in time. And there is the realm of perception, which is not in time, not judgmental, not dualistic. And when you are perceiving the other as beautiful, you are perceiving the beauty in them, not that it's a beautiful form. The form takes you to the beauty, which is not the form. So the beauty is not in the form. It's sort of an expression of the form. So you see through the form to the beauty, you say, oh, that's beautiful. You see? And then the mind says, oh, that's a beautiful object. I want to be like that. I want to have that. Now that's, that's a totally different direction. That's the sense of separation that is, that is in this experiencing a lack and desire. So yes, the physical body image, you carry it, you carry it. As you say, I'm not, you don't even know what you look like, but you, you carrying, you keep refreshing ignorance, <laughs> you know? Keep refreshing this image and I, I, don't, I don't even know what the image is. <laughs> because we don't really perceive images. We conceive images, but we don't perceive images. Our perception is always that of being, that consciousness knowing itself. I don't, but I don't get what you just said. I said that we don't perceive images. We conceive them. We, it's, it's, a, it's like when you're looking at the screen, you're not perceiving the images on the screen. You're perceiving the screen. You're never perceiving the images, you're perceiving the screen, you see. But when you, when you, you have the overlay of images on the screen and then your focus comes onto the images, you think that you're perceiving the images, but in fact, you're perceiving the screen. So, so there is our, our we, we, we're perceiving an overlay, a, a, a superimposition. We perceive a superimposition onto consciousness. So it's like you are consciousness, but you superimpose an image of Amna, which as you said, you don't even know, you have to keep looking at the mirror again. So let me, let me you know, you have to, you know, those in the old days, uh, we used to, the women, and I don't know if people do it now, but I know my, my mom used to carry a small mirror in her uh, bag, in her, you know, the thing, the, her bag. Purse. <laughs> purse, purse, thank you, purse. She would carry a small mirror and she would, look, you know, at herself sometimes, I don't know, she would do some things like that, I don't know. So, um, so it's a super imposition which we take, which we take to be our self because we, once we separate ourselves from our true nature, then we are, we're experiencing, our, we're experiencing ourself as an, as an image or a series of image as, as a body, as a, as a download in time and space, we experience ourselves separate. We experience ourselves separate from the totality, and so we are concerned about 
our image, about our bank account, about our future, about our body, about our children, about our tribe, about you name it, you know, it's, it's, it goes on, it, it keeps multiplying, you know. So, as long as we don't comprehend that process of projection and miscon misconception about I, as long as we, we don't understand it, it continues to operate. You follow? Yeah, I follow. I'm sorry, I still don't get the whole superimposition. I don't I don't get it. Well when when you say I are you referring to an image? No. No, you're referring to I, just I, but, but then you add the image, right? You, I mean, yeah. you say I, then you say I, beautiful Amna, I, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's the superimposition. It's, it's like oh. a baby is born and we say, oh, this baby, we're gonna call it uh, Joe. <laughs> now it's, Joe, it's with super import, uh, or maybe it's, a, it's not a very good example, but the superimposition is what we do all the time in, in ignorance. We, we are always adding an, an, an image, a story, a thought, and it, we, this, is in the, this is when we have separated ourselves from reality. We, have, we, we are reality, but we separate ourselves as, in, as a, the next step, as, as, as if we don't want to be being, so let me be somebody. I'm gonna be, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be whatever. And once, you separate yourself from truth, from reality, from consciousness, from the I, then you, you experience a sense of separation, limitation, incompleteness, isolation, right? Yeah. Worry, concern about this entity, the separate entity that you have chosen to be. <clears throat> so so being attached to, okay, one second, just back up two steps. Being attached to what the body looks like and what the body can do is no difference, no different than being attached to the your bank account Absolutely. or any other. Yes. You have to understand that being, being, doesn't know any attachment. Being is is being. It's not like you know a dog is attached to his master, you know, or the master is attached to, to his dog, or the dog is attached to his bone. Being is not a phenomenal. Being is reality. Being is the I am. You follow? Being yeah. is, is God's being in us, God's being. Right? If you, you follow that? Yeah. 
So when you say being attached, you just made a big jump. I mean, a huge jump when you say being attached. Being doesn't know attachment. Mm -hmm. So in order to say being attached, you've leave, you have left being. And now you, you've entered into a model and in, you've, you've left being, you've left God. And now you're talking about something being attached to something else, an image or bank account, whatever, the body. But the thing to understand is that as soon as you leave being, it's an imagination. It's, it's, there isn't, you cannot leave being because you are being. Being is, being is, it's absolute. But still we experience attachment to the body or to an image. So I'm not speaking, you know, fictitiously. I'm, it's actually our our dream, our our nightmare, <laughs> our our unhappy dream, that we're attached to the to the body. We're attached to something. But as being, which you are, uh, I am. There is no attachment. You follow? Yeah. And in order to attach yourself to the body or to anything, to your mother, to, to your dog, to your car, you have to enter into a fiction. You have to supposedly leave being and become Amna, which I refer to as a superimposition. You have to wear on, wear the costume, the tight, the tight costume, but it's nice, very fitting. It's really tight. You know, in the old days, they used to, the women used to wear the corset, corset, <laughs> they tie those strings, but it's very fitting. You have to wear the costume. So it's a superimposition. You have to leave. It's as if you're leaving your true nature, universal being, God's being. And when you leave God's being, then you create the me and you create the others, a multitude, multiplicity of others. You create the world, the objective world that you perceive outside of yourself and you create your personal mind and other minds. That's it. But that's the effect of the superimposition. Um, oh. I think you would say just understanding that would be, would be like enough. And is there anything else that would like help fa facilitate that? Keep returning to it. presence so without, like er, hmm. that adding the story and whenever the story arises see that it's just it's completely impermanent like look at weather the wind thought memory feel sensation see that all your ex content of your experience is a fl flow. And that which you are is not a flow, is the reality. Is the, is, does not flow, does not move. And is unaffected by the flow.
So just like earlier when you, okay, so returning to presence, like earlier when you said, when you're referring to I, what are you referring to? And prior to you asking that question, I was referring to this body mind. But like when you ask that question, it's like, like referring to I as awareness. So like that, yes. like is that? It's very nice when you ask yourself, what am I referring to right now in this moment? When I say, ah, you're annoying me. The me is I. When, what are you referring to? Are you referring to awareness? To I awareness? Also, when you were talking with Isaac and like you said the words, the, like the religion of the me. Yes. Well, I've been subscribing to that religion. I've been very <laughs> devoted. <laughs> it's we, a shit religion. We, we knew you were a member. You, we are all members. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a, a membership uh, cards there. <laughs> yes. Probably one of the high priestess. But <laughs> we're not talk about yeah, that. No, 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 no. There is, you haven't earned those wings yet. You know, please don't, don't earn those wings. You're doing good as well. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so. Also, it's just the practice, or not practice, but like the question of what am I referring to that that also supports in not subs like not practicing that religion or not subscribing to that. Yes, anymore. You know, the thing is, whenever uh, you see that, when I ask myself, what is the I that is annoyed right now, you will find that you're not referring to consciousness then don't take the next step because the next step is i'm annoyed with you and i i'm gonna get i'm gonna take my revenge <laughs> That's my, That's my old way <laughs> so you you don't take that next step you, you keep returning to wait a minute you know here i am what am i what do i mean by i it's important because as soon as you go the wrong, the wrong way, and you continue to walk the wrong walk or drive or run or ride the horse the wrong way, the further you get away, you're getting further away from the right, the right way. And the, the right way is the path of, of love, the path of truth. God's mind, God's presence. It's your presence is not your own personal presence. It's God's presence within you. Don't be so arrogant and, and kick God out of her seat and take over her seat. Don't be so arrogant. Your presence is God's presence within you. And to recognize the true true presence, what presence refers to, does not refer to your own personal mind and your own personal images and the view of your body and the view of your, how much your grandmother loved you and no, none of that. So, <clears throat> Like the stubborn thoughts about like, like this body performing, being able to perform certain things when that comes up and there's like a pull. What? And it's like not, it's not happy. So, but like, what's the suggestion? You see. So you, you want the body to perform certain feats that it cannot perform? And did I, did I understand your, your question correctly? Yeah, like, um, uh, like being more active, stronger, more yes. flexible. Yes. 
Well, you know, the body is like, uh, like our car, you know, like, uh, you know, we have to tend to it to a certain extent. We have to take care, we have to uh, give the body certain uh, good, good nutrition, vegetarian, healthy, organic. We have to give the body some exercise, some expose the body to, to beauty, you know, walking in nature, visiting museums. Well, I mean, not now, but I mean, uh, reading, reading some, uh, you know, pleasant poetry or, uh, Listen to music that that is that has you know some genius in it. Um, but judge, judging the body, to judge the body is is to separate yourself from from the body, which is one body. God's body is only one body. It's only one truth, one reality. There isn't reality and the, and the body and my body and your body and his body and her body. No, it's one reality, one truth. When you are judging the body, you're separating yourself from God. You tend to the body. That does not mean you are judging the body. You take care of the body. You give the body rest. And uh, you know. but yes, whenever you you are separating, you're judging the body, you're separating yourself from God. You understand? Mm -hmm. I no, no. Yeah, then I you don't. want to. <laughs> then you want the body to be a better body. <laughs> File a letter of complaint and send it to heaven. That's where God has his perfect. <laughs> in the you know, you have to understand also that in today's society, because of how the direction that things have occurred, in general we are less active. I mean, we drive. We, we in general we are less active than. So the, the the body is adjusting over over the centuries to how uh, things are, have changed. Are changing. So uh, we sit so much more now, and we uh, we don't harvest our own food. We don't even go to pick our own tomatoes. We we go once a week to the market and we buy everything in one in one shot. So it is you have to understand that that it's a the body and and the, the entire realm is one one system one in, integrated system. So don't be so harsh with the body, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, do your best with. Uh, you know, giving the body some care. Don't be obsessive about it. Don't become like a, a health fanatic or you don't become a, an exercise fanatic or a yoga fanatic or a, a jogging fanatic. No, if you enjoy yoga, do yoga, jogging, jogging, okay, but don't become obsessed about the body or about anything. Be balanced and more and also more relaxed, but you know, sometimes you set up a schedule, if you're doing yoga or some exercises, or you set up a schedule and follow a certain schedule, why not? It may help to, because of uh, the tendency to sort of, everything is being taken care of for us. You know, you may have to do some effort in the other direction of, 
some things you have to take care of them yourself. So don't wait for the yoga teacher to come and offer the class for you, you know, just, uh, by the way, Shiva, who's right here, does, you know, offers these very beautiful meditations uh, twice a week, I think. And you can also listen, you can also give your, your body, mind really good treatment that way. So you have to take care of the body, you have to tend to it. You have to, uh, without being the body, uh, without being identified as the body, without separation, without separating yourself from the wholeness, from the totality. You follow? Yeah, I was gonna say how, but then you already answered that earlier. And the, the, the peace within, don't mistreat, mistreat the peace. Don't honor the peace within mm. and play in the world. It's mm. kind of like, like cleaning the house, like you, like, have, having a nice clean house and like enjoying that and but it's button like I'm not that like that right <laughs> the, in the clean house being the peace within yes no no the clean house being the body it's like tending to oh. it yeah and enjoying it but yeah. it's not yeah right yes yeah you yeah, enjoy the the house is clean, but you know, if you look, if you, when the light is shining a certain way, you would be surprised how much dust there is. <laughs> you know, that's why we, we never, we, that window over there was in the afternoon when the sun is setting, everything is dusty. We immediately close the door and leave because we just mopped a few hours before. You know? <laughs> yeah, you have to be a little lighthearted about it because. Uh, because at the body mind level, you know, it's dynamic, you know, it's, it's fluid. It's not like, oh, you know, really clean and really dirty, you know, it's, it's everything in between, you know. Um, so you, you, yes, yes, we, you, you clean the house, you know, to a certain degree. If the house is really big, you cannot clean the whole house in one day, you may need three days to clean it. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I think you you get it. You're you're good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, John. Any questions? Hello, Macdy. No, hold up. Hi. Um, really good to be here. You answered many questions and um, I have kind of a false sense of responsibility, maybe, that I have a hard time currently with all this um, vaccination movement going on. I have a hard time just to relax inside of myself because I see, I judge the whole thing as a total hoax, knowing that the body is an amazing biological instrument that can take care of itself and that there is no outside 
virus that it's compromising anything. It's just our lifestyle, our abuse of our precious body gift that causes all this trouble. So I feel just, um, I have this idea, if I don't speak up, then I'm guilty. This is kind of an, um, an idea in my head, like this I learned early on. If you just remain quiet and a crime happens, then you are responsible for it. Something along those lines. Yes. You know, you know, there is a, the placebo effect. You know, when uh, somebody believes that, oh yeah, this is med medicine, they, uh, the placebo has an effect on them. <laughs> yes? <laughs> yes? So, you also don't want to deprive the placebo effect. Now, I know it's much more complex, you know, uh, it's much more complexity than just what I just sh shared. But the point I wanted to express is that your understanding, your perspective, your way of life, the way you perceive and you comprehend and you relate and doesn't apply to everybody. Um, from a very, very young age, I, I was, I think more uh, like you, that I somehow, I, I was very young, I, had, I couldn't really think about these things or express sophisticated, my sophisticated point of view about things, but, but if I realized that in my life, it's, it's been more like an intuitive path, or a path of, I didn't even know the term God, but there's some some form of guidance. It, 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 just speaking about it sounds much more sophisticated than what it, it, it is. It's just my way. It's somehow it's how things unfolded. But that was not the way of, I would say, all the rest of the members in my family. <laughs> and then if you go beyond that, you know, so, yes, the, I do share the, the view that, that the body, the body mind is, God's body mind it has infinite potential, especially when you are guided, you know, by God's light. But that's just my uh, take on it. Any. And because uh, somehow some people perceive my opinion as being more important than other people's opinion, I would like to say that that's just my point of view. That's that's all. Don't, it's not something to be emulated. You know, it's just that's how. Uh, don't. Uh, so, anyways, I don't know if just sharing that with you is has some meaning to you, but that's and and now I mean, I mean the whole thing is so there's so many 
factors is this the greed and the, all the whole financial interests and the political movements and there there, are, there is so much inner dispute you know when it comes to this issue the, somehow we, we I feel that it's important to approach this topic from a place of peace. And we can only approach uh, this topic from a place of peace as, as the peace right now, as this, this peace, as this peace. And we don't know what is around the corner, but we know the peace. And so that is something that we cherish because it's God's peace within us. And so that is something that we know when it's there, it's our experience. And I trust that peace. Thank you. And it, it will avail itself to point the direction whenever the moment presents itself in all circumstances. It is that peace which is the path Okay, well, very lovely to be with you all. Isaac, mucho gusto. Lovely to see you, Isaac. Holger. Amna, Amna, George. Holly. Shiva, salut Shiva. J'adore ta chemise, elle est très belle, j'adore. <laughs> Kelly, Zoe, and Jenny. Jenny and Jenny. Hello, Kelly. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you, Maggie. Hola, Jenny. Hola, Jenny.